Do you commit to, uh, to observing regular order in the certification process of the 2024 election, even if Kamala Harris beats Donald Trump? Well, of course, if we have a free, fair, and safe election, we're going to follow the Constitution. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. We're just about 100 days away from what some fear could be a second January 6th. And so that bit of cagey nonsense from GOP House Speaker Mike Johnson is a little bit less than reassuring, particularly when we know who will be doing the deciding of if the election was free, fair, and safe. It'll be up to him. But to be clear, certifying is not. Certifying elections is a requirement of election officials. They don't get to override the will of the people by refusing to certify simply because they don't like the results of a particular election. That's not how it works. And this willingness to invoke false conspiracy theories lends credence to the broader election denial movement. But the issue is that many Republican voters might go along with Johnson there because they've been trained to not trust our elections. If Vice President Harris were to win this election, would you accept that result? No, no. I'm not gonna move to another continent, but just watch out, man, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. So. And w w if, if Trump were to win the election, would you accept that result? Yes. Absolutely. Why would you accept that and not the other? When he was in office for the four years, the economy was doing great. You know, put up a wall. Yeah, he, he had that in check. We didn't give money away like this uh, Paris deal. That's a joke, you know. The climate uh, deal? The climate deal's a joke. You know, the, he paid money to, for people to talk to God and they can control the weather. And nobody can do that. All he did was... He said, is this a, is this a honest election? And it wasn't. I mean, everything that they, I have indicted him for is just a bunch of theater, as far as I'm concerned. Look at 2,000 mules. Look at all of the evidence of, of what they have done as far as cheating. I mean, it's right there. But we have the DOJ, we have the FBI, we have the CIA. They're all in the left's pocket. Well, there are a lot of Trump appointed. There, no, there are a lot of Trump appointed judges. As a matter of fact, I think 59 of them heard cases of election fraud and found absolutely nothing. And one of them on a technicality did. And, and so I think that, you know, it, it's been adjudicated in the courts at, at the very least. What I'm asking is, you don't think any of this disqualifies him from being president? Though? Are you kidding? Why would it? Why? Going back to that election, you think it was it was stolen? Yeah, it was definitely stolen. No doubt about it. Well, there's some doubt, right? Because President Biden's the president now, and 60 courts said it wasn't, and here well, we are. Those right. were procedural dismissals, right. Yeah. right? So I don't think, you know, many, many, many affidavits, they keep saying there's no evidence. The definition of an affidavit is evidence. The word evidence appears in that definition. So to dismiss all of that, that evidence, and they do it all the time. So it's, it's, it's absurd that the media mainstream media, not all media, but much of the media is playing along. They're I have thick skin. You can come after whoever. They're, they're hiding and suppressing news. You have the government involved in censorship, government censorship, using media as a proxy for that. It's absurd and people see that. We're tired of it. I just don't believe that there are that many Democrat voters out there. You're trying to tell me Joe Biden got the most votes in history? Look at look at what was happening there. Very shady stuff. We've already we already talked about the the evidence that they're saying is not evidence, and it's the same thing with his with Biden's, uh, you know, with his financial dealings, saying no evidence, no evidence, no suspicious bank activity, you know, suspicious reports, the checks. There's plenty of evidence. That's like mainstream media just won't talk about it. They're hiding it. Trump has admitted he lost the election numerous times, but the damage is already done. He was good. He did a good job. Yeah. He was smart. Uh, cunning. He did a good job. And are you guys still close or are you no one? No, I don't think so. Um, he is, uh, after I lost the election, I, I won the election, but when they said we won, he called me up three or four times. I didn't take his call because I was so busy fighting it, you know, with, with what went on. And we've caught him. I don't know if you see it, but you will. Um, but he called me up three, four times. Um, and finally I had a little time, I called him back. And he went on Fox and he started talking about, the president called me. I didn't call him, I returned his phone call. And he started talking very personally about how I was feeling, how I was doing, how. And I said, that's really a betrayal. I didn't talk about how I was feeling. I just, it was a, a phone call that lasted very quickly. Just, hey, how you doing, Geraldo, how's it going? It's not my deal. He's, he's, he's not my psychiatrist. Right. 
but he made it sound like it was such a big deal. It was a nothing. He, I, all I did was return his call. But he said, the president called me like I'm reaching out to him. And I haven't spoken to him since. I mean, honestly, we had millions of more votes than we did in the first election. We did great in the first one. We won. And I was told we got 63 million votes in the first election. I was told if we get 60, 63 million votes, same number, there's no way we can be defeated. I got 10 or 12 million votes more than that, more than anybody had ever got. We got the most votes of anybody, of any sitting president in history. And... He beat us by a whisker. You can see there that even when he admits he lost, he bundles it with election misinformation. The idea in this case that he should have won with far fewer votes. These sort of casual deceptions added up over time lead to people not trusting the results, perhaps enough to support an election official violating their responsibility to the voters. And because of years of these sorts of lies by Trump and many others in politics and media, despite all evidence to the contrary, and there's a lot of it. Trump supporters are convinced that if he loses in November, it can only be because the election was rigged. And trust me, that these lies are way more common than you might even think. See if you can catch this one. This was the last week in office for me because of a horrible, horrible election where I got many millions more votes than I got the first time, but didn't quite make it, just a little bit short. We gotta clean up our borders, we have to clean up our elections, or we're not gonna have a country, but... And many Trump loyalists will fight any evidence that indicates he actually lost, despite the overwhelming amount of it. Donald Trump has admitted he lost since 2021. Ivanka admitted he lost, most of his cabinet have been forced to admit he lost, and yet he managed to sow so much doubt in his base that there are people who may never trust an election again assuming their candidate loses. They don't even trust his occasional admission of failure. That said, this election denialism could result in a second January 6th, but bear in mind that there are laws in place at the federal and state level to make sure that certification happens no matter what. That said, the GOP has spent the time since the last attempt to deny the results of an election, putting people in places to challenge those laws. So, responsible election officials, as well as you and I, need to stay vigilant and refuse to allow these rogue officials trying to take matters into their own hands to become normalized. Thanks for watching our video. Did you know that you can support our show by becoming a subscriber? Just click the subscribe button and also ring the bell so that you get notifications when we're live or when we post new content.